The biggest difference between self-publishing and publishing, besides just the income stuff, the money part of it, is that you have to do everything if you self-publish it. So you have to be the one to promote it. You have to be the one to send those emails to conductors. When you find out who's conducting at various all-state groups or who gets invited to Midwest, you have to be the one to contact them and say, I have a new piece. And it takes a lot of time. Um, you have to be the one to go to those conventions and meet the directors and shake their hand and, you know, say, you know, go to their concerts and talk to them after. And I feel like it doesn't really ever stop being necessary. I self-publish everything and that was, it turns out, a really good business decision. But I, that's not why I did it. I did it because nobody wanted my music, honestly. So I had music and nobody seemed interested in it. I had Redline Tango for band and a major publisher um, of concert music, of like orchestral music that I loved. Uh, they published band music too, and they wanted the band version of Redline Tango. It was already getting quite a bit of play and I was able to keep up with it on my own. And I thought about why would I go with this big publisher? It would be a huge, like, you know, 15 year old me would think that would be so cool to be published by the same company that published all these superstar composers of the 20th century. But I realized that when I saw what the percentages were, I thought that doesn't really make any sense. I, if I ever hope to make a living just from writing and not teaching or anything else, I need to retain the copyrights and get 100% of that. And as long as I can keep up with the paperwork, I think I can do that. And I was able to keep up with the paperwork for a long time, but then I was writing less and less music because it did become a lot of work to ship all the, the sets out, the first piece that I wrote that was a sales piece that had a lot of volume to it was a piece called Undertow. That was commissioned by Cheryl Floyd's band, uh, Hill Country Middle School in Austin, and they'd commissioned several already at that point very successful pieces. Um, Cajun folk songs from Tekeli, uh, Shenandoah they commissioned from Tekeli, and uh, basically everything that that group was commissioning was doing really great. And uh, Cheryl Floyd asked me to write a piece for them. I said yes, and I wrote Undertow. And I didn't know what to do with it because my other pieces prior to that were all these collegiate level, very difficult rental only pieces. And now I had something that was, you'd, you know, you'd need to be able to buy physical copies because middle school and high school bands, for the most part, need, want to purchase it, not rent it, like I do with my upper level stuff. I remember uh, not knowing what to do. And I talked to Cheryl Floyd's husband, Richard Floyd, uh, and I said, do you have any thoughts on this? Because he was very connected in the state of Texas where I lived and knew everybody. I said, what do I do? And he said, let me make a phone call for you. And he called Pepper. And I don't know whom he spoke to, but within a day or two, I got this, at the time for me, huge order from Pepper. They said, we're gonna make, you guys said, we're gonna make this an editor's choice pick, and we're gonna put it on our promotional CDs that you guys were sending out at the time. And uh, so we need, I think it was like 10 sets. And I was like, wow! I can't even imagine selling 10 copies of something in a day. And so I went to the UPS store and I uh, had them make copies of the parts. And I had a printer that could print 12 by 18 paper. And so I printed the score and I hand folded every page and long reach staple bound it. And I stuck it all in a manila envelope and sent you guys 10 copies of that. I was like, sweet, that is, that is amazing. I'm gonna be able to eat today. And I was so excited. And uh, not like two days later, you guys ordered 20 more sets. And I was like, okay, great. And so I did it again. And I spent a whole day making 20 more sets for Pepper. Within a week or two, you ordered 50 or 100 sets more. And I was like, I can't do that. I don't know what to do. It's not easy to find printers that know how to print music because it's very particular. I used to have scores copied at Kinko's and they would make an 11 by 17 score but bind it along the top so it was like a calendar? Like that's not how you read a score. I was happy to find someone who could do the printing and I ordered the sets and um, it was only affordable if I got 500 sets. And I thought well I'll eventually it'll take 20 years but I will sell 500 sets on this thing. And it was cheaper, cheap enough compared to 250 sets that it was worth doing. So I'm you know, home one day in Austin, Texas, where I lived at the time, and I get this phone call on my cell phone, and it's super noisy, like there's an engine or something in the background, and this guy's like, where's your loading dock? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm just a guy in the suburbs, basically. And he's like, well, then you got a problem, because I need a loading dock. I'm like, I think you have a wrong number. I'm pretty sure I, you don't need a loading dock. He said, did you order, like, music or something? I'm like, oh, no. 
I did. He's like, yeah, I've got 1,500 pounds of music on my semi for you. And I said, okay, well, bye. And I gave him the address. He pulled up this 18-wheeler on my street. And I go out there, and he's like, here's your pallet of music. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with... A pallet of music is big. It weighed 1,500 pounds. And so, like, what do I do with that? He's like, well, you know, they didn't pay for liftgate access. I'm like, what's liftgate access? I don't know what any of these things mean. He's like, that means that you've got to get this off the truck. I'm like, I weigh 110 pounds. Like, I can't lift 1,500 pounds. We're going to be here for a week if I try to do that. And he's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. I said, do you have, like, a pallet mover on the truck or something? And he's like, yeah. And I said, well, I have... Uh, $40. And he's like, well, then I have a pallet mover for you. And so he got his pallet mover and moved this huge pallet into my dry, or into my uh, garage. And I was like, what in the world am I doing? And that was one piece. Now I had one piece and it took up half my garage. And now I have, what, 30 pieces or something? So eventually it became inc- just burdensome to have that kind of inventory uh, managed. And so I had to find, you know, ways to print it that I could print small, smaller quantities at a time without having to pay a lot more money. And um, it's been a real process over the years. So I was looking for somebody to print my music and was told that Pepper would be willing to do that for me. You guys have this massive warehouse. So once it's printed, you guys can hold it and hold it as long as I need it held. You also can just print for me five copies at a time that I can get as soon as I need them, basically. Like, you guys have been incredibly fast on that. That allows us to not have to manage inventory in a way that requires much knowledge about how well a piece is going to sell. Like, if I have a new piece, I might hope it's gonna sell a ton of copies right away. And in the old model, I would have had to have printed enough copies to be ready if that happened. But if it didn't happen, then I potentially have hundreds of copies of a piece that just get tossed eventually, or who knows what. You guys can print smaller quantities for me as needed, like on demand, essentially. And that allows me to have more pieces, have a manageable inventory. You guys have been willing to drop ship a lot for us when we have a larger order that, you know, it's a lot for us to put together and box. You guys can do it faster than we can now, even if it means printing copies fresh, like that day or with soon within a week or whatever and shipping them out. Sometimes it's still even faster than we can do on our own. So it's allowed me to remain self-published, not have to turn over control to anybody else. I can still retain all the copyrights and it's been just an ideal model for me. I don't think I could function, honestly, as a self-published composer anymore with a catalog this size if Pepper wasn't managing it for me.